the circus ship. In this Based on a True Story, we meet circus owner, Mr. Payne, who's traveling with his ship full of circus animals to their next destination. When the ship gets into an accident and wrecks. Listen to what happens as the animals are forced to swim ashore and experience quite an adventure in search of their new home. Today's themes are courage, community, compassion, and cooperation. Today's question is, how can you hide so you won't be found? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. The Circus Ship by Chris Van Dusen Five miles off the coast of Maine, and slightly overdue, a circus ship was streaming south in fog as thick as stew. On board were 15 animals who traveled to and fro. The next day, it was Boston for another circus show. The captain, Mr. Carrington, was honest and sincere. He thought that they should drop the hook and wait for things to clear. But Mr. Payne, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped up to the helm where Captain Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop! Keep going, I've got a show to do. Just get me down to Boston Town tomorrow, sir, by two. Then came a crash, an awful bash. Things flew in the air. The ship had smashed into a ledge that no one thought was there. The shattered ship began to tip, then sank without a sound. The splashing, thrashing animals swam round and round and round. The captain said to Mr. Payne, Pray tell, what shall we do? We just can't leave them here to drown. We've got to save them, too. The animals? yelled Mr. Payne. Why, sir, what are you, daft? It's me that you should rescue. Pull me up into this raft. Now bury me to safety, sir, before I die of cold. Don't question me, marked Mr. Payne. Just do as you are told. Throughout chilly water all night long, the animals swam on until they reached an island beach just before the dawn. They pulled themselves up on the shore, bedraggled, cold, and beat. Then they staggered to the village on weary, wobbly feet. The people in the neighborhood had just begun to rise, and when they saw those animals, they had to rub their eyes. They thought they saw an elephant. But wait, how can that be? And what's that little monkey doing in the cherry tree? Soon... Animals were everywhere and into everything. There's an ostrich in the outhouse. There's a hippo in the spring. There's a tiger in the tulips. There's a lion on the lawn. There's a python in the pantry. It went on and on and on. Mr. Hood was stacking wood and nearly jumped a mile when he found the alligator sleeping on his pile. And Mrs. Dottie Daly, who grew daisies by the bunch, discovered that the zebras had been eating them for lunch. And Miss Fanny Feeny found, according to the rumors, that silly little circus monkey swinging in her bloomers. But everything changed quickly, like the turning of the tide, the night the abbot shed, shed caught fire with Emma Rose inside. From high above the abbot's farm, the tiger saw the shed. The sight of smoke and fire triggered something in his head. He jumped through flames a thousand times back in his circus day. So he ran past all the people and leapt into the blaze. Then everybody panicked. Help! Help! What can we do? When from the raging fire, something big burst into view. It was the most amazing sight, and everybody froze when they saw the little tiger saving little Emma Rose. That tiger's tricky rescue changed everybody's mind. The animals weren't bothersome. The animals were kind. And so they lived together. Side by side, they got along. It didn't seem like anything could possibly go wrong. Then, Little Red, the messenger, came running with the word. Apparently, a circus ship had sunk, from what he'd heard. The animals are from that boat they swam in from the day. The greedy owner wants them back. He'll be here any day. So the people called a meeting, and they quickly 
quietly hatched a plan. No animal that came to shore would sail off with that man. The next day, at the crack of dawn, a ship was at the pier, and up the lane marched Mr. Payne, whose voice was loud and clear. I am the circus owner. My ship sank in the murk. I've come to find my animals and put them back to work. He hiked until he came to the center of the town. His face was red. He was scratching his head. He stood there with a the frown. Mr. Payne looked high and low, but still he couldn't see the 15 circus animals of his menagerie. He ran around the alleyways. He searched the village square. He even checked the chicken coop. His animals weren't there. Mr. Payne was all tuckered out. His heavy chest was heaving. Then Little Red stepped up and said, Um, I think your boat is leaving. He ran off in a fit of rage. His ship was leaving sight. He jumped into a rowboat and he rowed with all his might. And from that day, they liked to say their lives were free of pain. It was a happy, peaceful place upon the isle in Maine. For today's activity, I want you to think about Chris Van Dusen's incredible illustrations in this book. One of my favorite pages is when he shows the town working together to hide the animals in plain sight. It is a masterpiece. So today, I want you to create your own masterpiece. Think about an animal that you can hide in plain sight. Maybe a tiger is hiding in the grass, or a hippo is hiding amongst floats in the swimming pool. Or, like our illustrator did, your monkey is disguised as a baby hiding in a carriage, also known as a stroller. It can be as realistic or as silly as you'd like. Now, let's get creative. Get a piece of paper and some coloring tools, crayons, colored pencils, markers, whatever it is you like. Draw an illustration of your animal hiding in plain sight. I have loved seeing all the pictures you've been sending me. So if you want, you can ask your grown-up to take a picture of your picture and send it to me at thegivingprojectforchildren at gmail.com or tag me in it on social media, and I'd love to respond. Thank you for sharing this book with me. Let's continue to develop our love of reading together. Till next time.